your seatbelt fastened whenever you're seated, it must remain securely fastened whenever the seatbelt sign is on. When opening up the overhead lockers, please take care as items may have moved and could fall out causing injury. As a reminder, smoking including e-cigarettes, vaping and the use of any other smoking devices is not permitted anywhere whilst you're on board. This includes the toilets which are fitted with smoke detectors. If you're seated in our club ball cabin, please take care of your personal electronics. Hi guys, today's video is about my recent trip to Ghana. In fact, I'm in Ghana right now, Accra, the capital of Ghana, as I make this video. And um, I had to travel to Ghana, spend a few weeks doing some work as a consultant. And um, it was going to be my first time traveling to Ghana, you know, or to any West African country apart from my home country, Nigeria, of course. As usual, I was a little bit nervous because, you know, first time experience traveling to a new place, especially a new place that bears a lot of similarities with my country, Nigeria. And I know this is not a video for it, but I mean, those of you who are Nigerians, I'm sure you know what I mean. The fact that Nigeria travel experiences are not always the best. There are a lot of ugly stories out there. So I was thinking that, you know, going to Ghana, um, I hope I won't have any problems at the airport and um, immigration, you know, all those regular stuff that you think about as a West African traveling back to your country. Um, let's just say that our airports are not the best of places. So, you know, that's a story for another day. Not to say that people don't have good experiences, tourists and other people coming in. Yeah, not to discourage anybody from traveling to Nigeria or Ghana or anywhere. But, you know, let me just, I'm just telling you that I had my reservations. Yeah, so, you know, I set out from Bristol in the UK. My flight was going to take off from Heathrow Airport in London. So I took a bus from Bristol, two to three hour journey. It was really a very comfortable ride altogether. You know, the UK public transport system is really, really standard. It's really good. And, you know, being what it is, there were no unexpected surprises. Everything just went clockwork. You leave at a certain time, you know, you're arriving at a certain time. And so, yeah, I got to the airport in good time, probably about 30 to 40 minutes um, before the time I was supposed to start checking in. So before I left, you know, I tried to make sure that I checked in online, you know, so that I could get a window seat because, you know, as a videographer and a photographer, someone who likes creating images, there's no better seat to sit in the airplane than the window seat, right? So that you could have a good view of the whole flight as much as possible, catch the sights if there are any, depending on the time of the day you fly. And so I was lucky. I checked in online and I was able to get a window seat and, you know, everything just, everything was fine. Being the first time traveling out of the UK since I got into the UK last year, I had to take some time to figure out my way around because Heathrow Airport is a large airport. Everyone knows that. There are different terminals depending on where you're flying to. So, you know, I had to be using my um, Google Maps and ticket information. So the good thing about the UK systems, and like many other advanced countries, and even in South Africa, there's a lot of visual communication going on. Visual signs that help you to quickly understand where you are and what you need to do next. Um, that helped a lot. But I would still say that, you know, getting into Heathrow Airport, if you are going there for the first time, it's still possible that you could get lost and, you know, not know your way. More helpful was the fact that, you know, at every point in time, there's a uniformed airport staff who you can ask questions for their information desks. So that's what I did. When I got in, I went up to the information desk you know try to find out just to confirm what i was seeing on the board on the on the on the screen about the time of flight and all of that and yeah they were very helpful eventually i got my bag checked in and i proceeded you know to go and do all the departure protocols and formalities and so on going to ghana for the first time right now my heathrow airport all right so bag checked in and i'm um, heading to the security check right now now to the terminal boarding gate has been announced b 44 and that's where i'm headed to right now so you know i told you i had checked in online the night before right and i got a window seat for myself so everything was cool uh, but when it came to actually uh, you know getting on board the plane i was stopped by the um, desk officer and she asked me to wait a bit and i was a bit concerned like what was going on and um, they told me that my flight seat had been changed. First thought was, oh no, 
I mean, that was the whole essence of checking in online. Am I going to lose my window seat and so on? So I was a little bit concerned, but she now said something. She said that your seat class has been upgraded. Now, I was tempted to, you know, start celebrating, but I needed to be sure exactly what they meant because for me, what was more important was that I got the window seats. Not necessarily that the seat is more comfortable. I just wanted to be have that, that experience. And so they told me not to worry that when I get into the plane, I just need to tell the air hostess and ask them to get me a window seat within the new class. And so, guys, it was a pleasant surprise. My seat was upgraded. So instead of sitting in the smaller seats and all that, I had a very nice, comfortable space, plenty of leg room, just one person beside me. And um, yeah, it was it was really nice. I felt special, you know. And um, yeah, the in-flight service was excellent. Um, they spoiled us with food and drinks, I would say, you know, even though it was not more than two or three times, but it just felt like you just had this feeling like you were being spoiled you know every now and then they pass by you want to drink wine juice water and then um, I think we had two meals in the six hour journey it was nice I put on my in-flight entertainment I watched um, the Godfather Godfather part one and I watched half of Godfather part two so if you haven't seen Godfather or if it's been a long time you saw Godfather good movie to check out again especially in today's world where the kind of movies they release these days from Hollywood and Disney are all crap but uh, Godfather, I was really pleasantly surprised to, to find myself still being entertained. I felt like I was watching it for the first time. The storytelling, the acting, everything about the, the movie, excellent. And uh, yeah, so I had a good time. I didn't really sleep. Um, the person next to me slept all through, and a middle-aged lady, I think she's Ghanaian. We, you know, we exchanged pleasantries every now and then, and she was really cool. So there was no crazy seat passenger experience, like maybe somebody with a baby or something like that, no. It was really a smooth flight. Um, yeah, the only drawback was, that, well, there were two parts of the flight that I would say were a little bit off in terms of not really positive experiences. And the first one was that when we got on the plane, we were told that they had to delay the flight by about 40, 45 minutes because when they were doing a system check, they found out that one of the tires was bad. One of the landing tires was bad. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, so in my mind, I was like, is this plane supposed to fly if you have a bad tire? And so I, I guess that's what they were trying to change. But then, you know, funny enough, after the pilot made the announcement, 10 minutes later, he said, oh, that they had checked and they realized that everything was okay. So we were going to take off. So in any case, we still got delayed for, by about 30 minutes. And then, um, yeah, the second part that was not too good was landing in um, Ghana. But before I get to the not too good part, let me talk about what went really well. What went really well was that my entry into Ghana from the point I disembarked from the plane going through immigration to the point when I was ready to collect my luggage was so smooth and so seamless, I was surprised. I don't know why I had just been expecting a negative experience. I don't know why I was just expecting to be on, maybe to be on a long queue, um, being confused as to where to go, what to, who to speak to, um, maybe being detained or being stopped unnecessarily by the immigration officials or by the um, guys, you know, on arrivals. Maybe something to do with yellow fever, vaccination card or um, passport issues. I don't know why I was that negative in my expectations, but I'm happy to say that it was a very smooth entry into Ghana. Like it was so pleasant. The, the staff were not necessarily smiling, but they were just calm and cool. And that's one thing I discovered about Ghanaians. Ghanaians are calm people, you know, not like Nigerians. I had the touch, you know, so I mean, Ghanaians are really calm people. So in another video, I'm going to talk about my impressions about Ghana and Ghanaian people and Accra, my experience here. Yeah, me say don't the girl, my life be like yo. Never look in a year, the book out, ain't the kind of year for you. The fishing in an under, so can store her by my side, oh, why? Set the tour up for the four, my other for the baby. But I'm here, yard is yard is. Don't be your bother, and it rocks. Yeah, going back to what I was saying, it was a nice experience getting in. So the part that wasn't too good was waiting for the luggage, because I think we waited for our luggage to come out for almost 40 minutes. I mean, it was crazy. I don't know if that's the norm but it was crazy but i used that time to try to get access to the internet make inquiries on how best to get a sim card how to get some ghanaian cds um or as they said is they call it or cds ghanaian currency and um you know just google map and find out where my apartment is get in touch with the apartment to let them know i had arrived yeah i used that, that time to do that but i was tired you know tired of standing because there were no seats around for anybody to turn to wait for their luggage so that was really frustrating but apart from that it was a beautiful trip all the way from London Heathrow Airport, all the way from Bristol to London Heathrow Airport, and then to the lovely and warm welcoming city of Accra in Ghana, West Africa. 
so that's my story i hope you enjoyed the video um i tried as much as possible to just just share with you my experience traveling and um uh, in the next few days i'll be sharing more videos from my time in ghana so this is a quick and dirty video i keep reminding myself that to make progress in life you don't always have to have everything perfect i don't have to have my studio set up before i make a video i don't have to have all my gear before i make a video i don't have to have my script all written out i don't have to memorize anything sometimes the best way to just get better and get productive is to just do it and so that's what this video is that's where it came from i just decided that look no more procrastination i need to start sharing my stories so i hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel i still believe in myself and in my channel that my channel will grow in spite of how it looks all right and it's you guys that will help me grow the channel you guys are listening to me so please like this video share drop a comment tell me about your own experiences traveling to ghana or any other country in africa and um yeah don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post my next video. Thank you for checking in. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one. The bad boy me no baby so hot now nah, you've gone and I've from it. Love me all the baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come and I'll show you how to go na na na.